weather out today, and uh, Joel just picked me up at home. Did you, Joel? Yes, sir. <laughs> How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You doing well, you just got done your birthday. You feeling old or what? I don't feel any older. No, no, I feel good though. You know, life's good. Life is good. Yeah. And the birthday was great. Surrounded by family and friends. We had music. We had food. We had drink. We had pretty much everything that you know you could ask for. Sir. And we're gonna go get some food. And speaking of which, actually, Joel, just slow down a little bit around this hill coming. No, up. no, no, I would go. No, 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 no. Super good, like chip truck classics, uh, but done right, homemade methods. Uh, yeah, Fox Pro Foodland, uh, downtown Julie Brown. So let's like do it. Up six two. We're loaded up, we're seated in the car here. And the first thing that we'll look at and talk about here is the uh, Dirty Bird Poutine. We got chicken fingers, we got sour cream, chopped veggies looks like, uh, maybe some gravy on there. And the nice thing about these chicken fingers here, all breaded in house. So again, like we were talking about earlier and they were telling us here when we were ordering, um, this is like standard fare that you would see with a chip truck. However, um, it's handmade. These pogos are handmade. Chicken strips, breaded in house, homemade burger uh, patties there. So again, they're taking that really home style cooking on the chip truck classes. And uh, we're gonna dive in here. Let's get it. All right, so we talked about the uh, <clears throat> the Dirty Bird poutine. I just want to give a shout out to Shannon and Adam Breccia right here at this uh, chip truck. These guys are making all this food right fresh, right in home, well, right in truck, and it's amazing. So Shannon and Adam, go check them out. It's on 62, going towards Maydock on the food lane in Foxville. So what's it called again? Downtown. Brown. Downtown Judy Brown. All right. Um, so what are we Joel doing? and I are doing this romantic style. Oh this my God! Should I definitely do? enough for uh, two people? Are we gonna like and wrap arms? Uh, <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not do that. So I'm gonna go fries. <laughs> Jeff last time went fries first. I'm gonna go all of it, other than just the chicken, because it's all looking amazing. Definitely big portions. Oh my God. Mmm. Thank God for napkins. There's literally everything on here. I'm not sure that we might have to read that out the menu to see everything they put in this. I think it's, it's kind ranch. of dope. There's bacon. Yeah, I feel the ranch in there. Yeah. There's bacon in there too. Like a lot oh of God. it. I'm gonna try this. Uh, I'll try the chicken finger. Yep. Can you try the chicken finger yet? I did. So that chicken finger. Oh my bread it in house where are we so we can mm. get up close there. Mmm. I uh a typical I think I might have said this last oh time at the bistro that it is nice to keep a good poutine. You know, classic. It's like uh, good bourbon. You know, a good pizza. You have to stick to the classic versions to really let you know to find out if it's good or not. Margarita pizza. Keep it really simple. Cheese sauce. You know, if it's a uh, good pizza. Similar to poutine. Um, however, I'll have to say, as far as like a everything, you know, poutine. That's what that is. is everything poutine. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's almost like a loaded baked potato with like peppers and shit on it. And their fries here. Or like a good base yeah. for a poutine. You can see like a good size, nice and size, nice country. Cut, cut in half. Country. Nice, nice, nice and country. <laughs> um, I'm not yeah. too big on the ranch. I don't like it too, too saucy like this. They could have went a little later on the sauce, but I, I really do. I'm enjoying it. It's a bit, it's a bit saucy for me, but I'm not that saucy of a guy. 
I'm digging it. Definitely a winner. Um, but certainly just grabbing fries and gravy at this place that, you know, because there is fries and gravy in this big mess mm. of everything. It'd be <laughs> awesome. Um, but if you're really looking for something different, something huge, uh, um, <clears throat> that also includes their hand breaded chicken fingers, and then definitely get the dirty bird. I have to honestly say, next time I come here, so I've tried a couple things here now. Next time I come here, I'm definitely getting chicken fingers because those chicken fingers that I have on top of that food team it reminds me of a real chicken finger. None of that, you know, in the store, you got that shitty bread crumb on it. Like this is like battered properly. Fresh chicken. Beautiful. I can't stop eating it. Thanks for inviting me out to eat this food. Well, that's what we want to do. We want to get this thing going. We just love promoting. This is what I want to do. I want to promote some music. I want to promote some business. Let's check this new shirt. We think the new shirt, buddy. Sands, the last Sands. The last Sands. The last yeah. Sands ever. So Sands yeah, the Record Man was like in Toronto, through all, like through everywhere, through all through yeah. Canada. There's only the last one in between them all. So I want to give them a big shout out because I always go there and I'm teaching my daughter, Emra, who's 13 years old, to dig through vinyl. And locally owned guy too, I believe. That it is, it is, it is. And I actually gave him a shout out while I told him about this. So he'll probably be watching this at some point. Uh, so Sands Record Man, go check them out in the mall. Um, I'm teaching my daughter how to dig through vinyl. And she's like, what am I looking for, Dad? I don't know any of these artists. I'm like, just look for cool pictures. You find something neat, or if you think you know a name, show me. Let's just look at it. And it's kind of cool to just dig through vinyl and find like those breakdowns of songs and stuff. So yeah. that's a lot of fun. Sam's has got a ton of vinyl there for them. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, the nice thing about vinyl is everything's about kind of, you know, listening to those single hit songs and that it's hard to really dig into an album, you know, that someone's tried to craft and make and, and that's where I think vinyl gets you back there. You have actually, to listen. You're going to sit down and you're going to listen to the whole album <laughs> yeah, and that's the way that kind of the artist intended it to be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And we're, and we're here in the 85 uh, Monte Carlo and sure. we've been driving around. I'm also teaching Emra about this kind of stuff. Cassette tapes. Give your 13-year-old or anybody under 16 a cassette tape to open. And they're gonna be like, what is this thing? And it's so funny. So we've been finding cassettes. There's a few cassettes at Sam's. I bought all the good ones, but there isn't much left around for cassette tapes. You can't find them anymore. Like Chum Lee's downtown Bellboy found some. A bunch of uh, yard sales. So I'm having fun. People are always telling me, oh, I got a big cassette tape uh, collection. I can give it to you. I don't want it. I want to go find the stuff. That's the half yeah, the fun. Know, yeah. You know, you gotta go drive around and it gives you something to do on yeah. a Sunday or whatever. I so. bought a car years ago. Had a cassette player. Went to the thrift store, shuffled around a little quick, bought one tape. It was Cool Mo D. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the only thing we played in that car. <laughs> yeah. It was just a Cool Mo D car. Yeah. And then when I was at Sam's, look what I got. The adapter. The adapter. So now I am kind of spoiled Central. and I actually do have some digital in this, this bag, girl. Well, before I fill up on this poutine here, let's, uh, let's, try, the, let's, let's try the burger. Along. Let's try the burger. All right. So Jeff loves to do the squeeze of the burger. We cut this bad boy in half and uh, it is uh, beautiful. We're also doing the burger romantic style. That's right. That. Right. Um, yeah, last time we, we were left with so much food last time. It was ridiculous. And that's just a nice style or nice style, nice size of burger. Yeah. You know, it fits in the palm of your hand, not yeah. too big or messy, good soft bun around it. And uh, Patty is uh, made in house. So, and this is their classic uh, cheeseburger. Mm. It's a good patty. It's like that smash burger style, right? Mm. Good, burger. <clears throat> good burger. Can't yeah. say a bad thing about it. No. No. It's good. Very, very classic style. Burger. It's uh, burger. But again, good burger. You're getting, a, you're getting a handmade patty in there. Yeah. A nice size patty. Like, not just like McDonald's thin patty. This is a stack. And I don't think they get too crazy and weird with their burgers like they do their poutines. It's a regular burger, or baked cheeseburger. Bacon cheeseburger. I think that's as wild as it gets. So if you're looking to go crazy, get the poutine. Or what we're about to dive into, which is another classic, talking about vintage things, bring you back to your childhood, is a pogo. However, the burger, definite, definite pass. It's a good one. I like it. You get kind of full. Mm -hmm. I like this though, because what we're going to do, is we're going to go in there, we're going to say to them, What's your specialty? And they're like the dirty bird poutine, so that's what we had to get. And then we're feeling, you always feel like you gotta get the burger from places almost, you know what I mean? Like, like let's see what they're, you almost can like judge a place on their burger, you know what I mean? And then here, Jeff and I have stopped here a few times or by ourselves and got these uh, pogos. 
I bragged about them so much at home one night that I had to turn around, go back and get six pogos for my wife, for my daughter, for my parents. And I brought them home and I won the night that night because <laughs> downtown Julie Brown knows how to make a damn pogo. They are a good pogo. Oh, massive dog. They're doing their massive own breading. Pogo. I'm bringing this one home. Gonna give the wife the oh my corn dog tonight. Yeah. Look at my hand to it. Should I put my so, forearm to it? I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let Joel dive into the pogo because I promised my wife I'd bring home dinner. Well, how about how about I take a bite off one side? And how, about, how about we just do this? We just break this bitch now. I'll do that romantic style again. Let's do that. Like this, Jeff. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the hand thing now? You want to share a pogo right now? Right? All right, let's go pogo right. style. Look at these pogos, definitely a beautiful. Break this in here. Look at the size of that hot dog. It's pretty much a goddamn sausage. Yeah. It's Get definitely a beautiful a corn batter. Yeah. What's the difference between a corn dog and a pogo? I think they're the same. It's just a brand, isn't it? Is there a difference? Yeah, I think it's brand. Yeah, I think a corn. I think a pogo is a corn dog. No. Damn. I mean, you can tell when something's homemade because they don't worry about it being perfectly shaped and mm. formed like those pogos that you get. They're a lot good. smaller and they're all the same size, all perfect. These are imperfect and that's the beauty. Another story. And if you eat too much of these, you will not maintain a perfect size and shape either. <laughs> Another story. I do not eat hot dogs, but in, in, a, in a pogo, in a corn dog, I eat a hot dog every day. That's good. Mm. There's lots of things that you may not eat normally, but if you batter it, <laughs> you will eat it. Trust me on that. Trust me on that. Mm. I'm not gonna lie. Got a bit of a sweat on. Yeah, it's hot in June, but I think I got like a food sweat on. It's beautiful. We'd normally just probably sample a couple of different things that we've been getting, but I'm actually got quite the appetite, so I'm pretty sure I've finished everything. Finished the burger, but the finished the pogo. Shared these, I guess we've been splitting, but still. A ton of food, even if you're splitting a few dishes. Yeah, you're gonna be going home with something. That's what it, that's what food trucks are about. Do you dip your pogo? And the, is it just ketchup and mustard? Do you mix it in like a I usually do it just, mustard? I usually mixture? do mustard. I don't like mustard, but for some reason on a pogo, I like mustard. What's with that? And on, and on a bologna sandwich, I like mustard. Then I like ketchup on everything else. I just don't understand that. I guess maybe the bologna and the, and the hot dog are the same meat, right? And I'm just trying to take the... That's right. And, no. and mustard so nasty that I'm just trying to take the nastiness out of it. Could be. Maybe. I'm a fan of a classic bologna sandwich. We can get the fanciest food in our house. Uh, you know, tartare and ceviche or whatever the hell you fancy and weird as you want to get. <laughs> um, but we'll also just muck out bologna sandwich on white bread. This guy was frying bologna like this deep the other day. It's disgusting. We did make gourmet bologna sandwich. That's kind of nothing. All right, well, let's cruise. Let's do a little hit the road before I die. Oh. It was awesome, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, let's pull these off. I don't feel good. My stomach hurts because I ate too much food. Yeah. Like cool. I, I feel good, but I'm full. Sweat. The white flag. <laughs> Surrender. Surrender. Downtown Julie Brown. Let's, yeah. uh, let's, let's, let's rate that poutine. That poutine, the Dirty Bird poutine, had everything on it. Bacon, chicken, uh, ranch dressing, gravy. I think in the in the fully loaded poutine world, like as far as if we're just talking in that class, I feel like it hits all the marks and I'm going to go a nine on it. Nine? You know? So I'm a, I'm a very, very, uh, I like meat and potatoes kind of guy. Like I said in the first episode, Kind of saucy for me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a seven and a half because I, I eat the outside of it. Still a great rating. It was, great, it was great. It was great. It was great. It's beautiful. The only reason I do this is because last time Jeff bashed my ratings, I'm just giving it two high ratings <laughs> at the beginning. You know what? I'm gonna bump that up to an eight because I just burped and it tasted again and it's delicious. <laughs> so that was an eight on the poutine. Dirty bird poutine. Check it out, downtown Mary Brown. What's up next, Jeff? Uh, for rating? Ratings. For rating. Uh, again, if we're talking like a pogo in the pogo world, they killed it. Absolutely killed it. I guess we're like if we're looking for an individual rating, um, you know, the pogo world again, it's it's handmade. They use a good quality wiener. I mean, they're not making their own wieners in house, but who does that? That's just weird. That's kind of weird. Almost a handmade wiener. You want that <laughs> wiener factory made? Uh, those little stainless steels. We're gonna press through a tube. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> what do you get that pogo? Uh, gonna get that pogo a nine. A nine? I don't know what else you can do to it. I mean, even the stick was like nice, nice holding stick. It wasn't a popsicle stick. No, nope. she was like bamboo. It was bamboo <laughs> stick. So I'll tell you about the pogo stick. I've never eaten a pogo anywhere but at my house or out of a microwave. And I like those. 
So I have to give that out of a 10, an 11, because Whoa. I've never actually found Whoa. a handmade pogo like that. We're just rewriting the rules. Here. We are rewriting the rules, but I'm telling you right now, my hair is standing up. Look at this, guys, my hair is standing <laughs> up. That pogo was next level, is amazing. So I give that pogo 11. 11 out of 10. That's the first time, ladies and gentlemen. So last, last of all, we gotta always try out the burger at every place we go. And that burger, I had no complaints. No. no. But I also couldn't brag. Yeah. No, it is, you know what? It's just a good classic burger. If you yeah. want a classic burger that is not going to ruin your day because you stopped in at a chip truck, you know, the lettuce was fresh, the tomato was good, 100%. the bun was soft, 100%. it wasn't too big, it wasn't too sloppy. 100%. So if you're looking for that kind of burger, it's great. It if is. you're looking for the big, like, you know, spoiled bacon, greasy burger. They probably make that might, too. They might. They, they probably might. make that too. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't say a thing bad about it, but I'm still going to throw a seven, which is still a great score. Yep. And there was nothing wrong with it. Yep. Um, but it depends what you're into that day. So that's what downtown Julie Brown has to offer that's as right. far as burgers go. I'd also say for that burger, like you said, it was good to go. Um, I really enjoyed how, the, how it was like a smash burger, kind of like it was like real meat, thick, it wasn't like just cheap as shit. It tasted good, the grease tasted good. So I'm going to give it a, yeah, I'm going to give it a seven also. And uh, so with, with like a roundup of that stuff, I'd have to say all together with all the food, I'm going to give that place a, a nine. Like honestly, I would stop there every day. I went there and bought the food for my family. Um, Solid nine. They're doing it right. And you Solid. know what? I'm going to have to look back on the pictures of the menu because I think they have even a lot more than, certainly a lot more than what we talked about. Oh, yeah. How you I'm kind of curious about, right? like, you know, do they do a dessert there? I don't know. We might have to check that out. But couldn't even do that. All your chip truck classics done right. Not just done right, but done, you know, homemade. Done right. Take some time. <laughs> that's uh, beautiful, man. I loved it. Yeah, it was good. Well, like I said, that's a white cousin in there busting their butts, uh, living their dream, like, you know what I mean? Like, there they are, not working for the man, they're out there working for themselves and making amazing food for the community. I went there the first time and their daughter was sir, was the one at the, at, at the counter taking the money and taking the order, so family-run business. You know what, that just, with the family-run business thing, that just bumped that up to a 10 out of 10, Julie Brown, True. downtown Julie Brown. We love these guys, so we want you to go down there and check them out on 62, uh, heading north towards Maydock. It's right there at the Foxville Foodland. I don't know, I can't say much more, man. No, I think it was great. Good, man.